before we begin our Mass this evening, we have a simple benediction. Ask the Lord to bless not only you, but all your families and all whose prayers you bring to the church tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> second book of Chronicles. All the heads of the priesthood and the people too added infidelity to infidelity, copying all the shameful practices of the nations and defiling the temple that the Lord had consecrated for himself in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, 
tirelessly sent them messenger after messenger since he wished to spare his people and his house. But they ridiculed the messengers of God. They despised his words. They laughed at his prophets until at last the rock of the Lord rose so high against his people that there was no further remedy. Their enemies burnt down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem, set fire to all its palaces and destroyed everything of value in it. The survivors were deported to Nebuchadnezzar, to Babylon. They were to serve him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. This is how the word of the Lord was fulfilled that he spoke to Jeremiah. Until this land has enjoyed its Sabbath rest, until seventy years have gone by, it will keep the Sabbath throughout the days of its desolation. And in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfil the word of the Lord that was spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord roused the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Thus speaks Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has ordered me to build him a temple in Jerusalem, in Judah. Whoever there is among you, of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, how infinitely rich he is in grace. 
because it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God, not by anything you have done, so that nobody could claim the credit. We are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus, to live the good life, as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But 
We can see it in ourselves, not in such an extreme way. But as well as the lights, as well as our good side, we, we, all, we all are aware of, in, in religious terms, we call it sin. We call it original sin, let's name it for what it is. That there is something about the human condition that we prefer the darkness. When we are capable of so much. You know, like many of you, I, I, um, I love music and I, uh, I listen to John, Johnny Cash. But nobody understands the themes of darkness and light better than, than Johnny Cash. Just, just listen to any, any of us. It's just full of it. And so to the Gospel, we hear about this interesting character called Nicodemus. Who is Nicodemus? Well, he, he was a powerful man in political terms. He was a powerful member of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was like the religious body in the days when these are the movers and shakers of all aspects of life. And Nicodemus was a powerful man in his day. And he was a secret disciple of Christ. You know, that, that was his little dark side. But he was a secret disciple of Christ. Yeah. He never came out into the open and declared himself. Uh, he, he was all done quiet. I suppose he, he had so much to lose politically. That's how he acted as he did. But when Jesus was arrested, who speaks up for his rights? Nicodemus. He finds it within himself to step out of the darkness and be himself, and be the man who God created. And of course, when Jesus died, he anointed the dead body of Jesus with expensive ointment and buried him in the tomb. He found the tomb and made a place for the dead body of Jesus. So although we had a lot to lose politically, and everything was done in secret, then he let the light shine and he found that courage which God had given him. But the fight between darkness and light, the good news from the battlefield is that the war is won. But there are still battles to be fought. We all know that's a fundamental part of our faith. Yes, the war is won. Jesus has won the battle. He's won the war. But there are still battles to be fought. You probably all know this little story, but it, it's, a, it, it, it's a lovely story. You know that story of the boy talking to his grandfather. And the boy says to his grandfather, Why is there so much hatred in the world? Why is there so much evil? Why is there so much badness? Why? Why are there so many broken promises in the world? Because there is a fight going on inside of you and all of us, replied his grandfather. A fight between two wolves. The first wolf is the wolf of hatred, evil, madness, and broken promises. And the second wolf is the wolf of truth and love and grace and faithfulness. And the boy says to his grandfather, well, which of the two wolves will win the fight? The wolf that you feed, replies the grandfather. The wolf that you feed will win the fight. During this Lenten time, may the light of Christ heal all the dark air. Shall we stand now and say to God the priests? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, but rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Our mission is water and wine, may we share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our human. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, and the praise and glory of his name. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Preface number four of Lent. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father Almighty, and eternal Lord. Isn't it great to have life in the church? Okay? Have you missed the laughter of children? It's lovely, isn't it? Eh? It's great. For through bodily fasting you restrain our thoughts, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic prayer number two. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat on it. For this is my heart, which will be given up. similar way when the supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Hmm.
everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendour of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. But through Christ our Lord, our Amen. So, thank you for being here at Mass, and thank you for joining us online, for those of you who are doing that. And thank you to all of you who prepared tonight's beautiful liturgy, and those of us who kept us safe um, by being in the church together. Um, looking ahead now to Holy Week, um, we, we were able to offer the services of the Tridham here in Mackworth on Holy Thursday at 7pm, um, Good Friday at 3 o'clock, and Stations of the Cross on Good Friday at 6 o'clock. And there won't be a Mass on the Saturday night, the Easter Vigil. The Easter Vigil will be down at St. Mary's. However, there will be um, a 10 o'clock Mass on Easter Sunday morning here in the So let me just say that once again. There will be on the, the Easter weekend, there will be no evening Mass here at Christ the King, but there will be a Easter Sunday Mass at 10 o'clock. You don't, of course, have to make your Easter duties this year because of the uh, pandemic. However, I am available in the side chapel after Mass for any of you who do wish to go to confession. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go now in the peace of Christ. Good lad. That's what it's all about, isn't it? There's the future of our church. <laughs> Probably the next parish priest. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Good evening.